Welcome to our next video from Surrey Hill Smokers. Today, we're going to be showing you how to prepare two brisket flats in different ways to then cook on the offset smoker. Okay, first, with my preparation, I always inject. Basically, I use a good quality beef stock and a meat injection needle. What we do, transfer it into a tray. Just makes it easier. Stops any of the juices getting everywhere when you're trying to inject. Put that over there. Let's get this stock up. Now, this stock I've already pre-cooled down. Make sure you don't want to have it hot, otherwise you're going to start cooking internally. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just inject about every inch across this actual piece of meat, just to make sure that that flavour goes throughout. Okay, now that we've got our meat all injected and ready to go, we're going to take this out and wipe off the excess that we've got on the surface. That way, it's just going to give us enough for the actual rub to stick to, but not too much, that you're going to have a totally wet surface. Okay, there we go. Try that in there. Now, what we're going to also do beforehand is we're going to cut a corner off. This reason for this is it actually shows you where the grain is running. So you can actually make sure when you're cutting afterwards, you cut across the grain, not with the grain. Just chuck that in there. What we're going to do now so you're going to take the rub and give it a good sprinkle, generously. Now this is my own personal rub, and what we'll put is the video for this later on down the line, how to make this one. What I'm trying to do, give it a good coating all over. Make sure it's sticking everywhere, including the ends and the sides. Flip it over. What you can do, literally let that stuff drop and stick it on the other side before you even start. There we go. Rubbed up, ready to go. So we've seen how Gavin prepares his brisket. He does his injections, I don't do anything like that. So I just stick with a simple salt, pepper and garlic rub on mine. So now we've got our SPG seasoning ready. It's now time to get it onto that brisket. So we've got ourselves a nice big pan that we can put the brisket and the brisket will fit into. Let's put it in there and we'll put it on there. The other bonus of being able to use it on a tray is if any of the seasoning falls through, which invariably it will, because not all of it sticks, we can get it back and we can put it back on uh, uh, when we've put it on the smoker. So that's the meat side done. Let's flip her over and get the other side. We haven't used any binders or anything like that on it. It's just straight onto the onto the meat, which is fine. It will stick. As you can see, that me measures that I've done it in will actually uh, cover this this brisket flat perfectly. Let's get some on the ends, and we're good to go. So now it's time to get the briskets onto the smoker. So we've got it steady temp holding temperature. We're going to get Gavin's on. We're going to put that fat side down. The Oklahoma Joe's actually really good at keeping temperature consistent throughout. So, and now we'll put mine on fat side up, just so we show you the difference. Actually, makes no odds which way round you put your briskets because it doesn't. It's a myth that it renders through. So now's the time to put the, the temperature probes in. You just slide it, inject it in. It's a bit tough through the, uh, the, the fat there. We'll put the one into Gavin's. We're going to put that into the thicker part, just so we can keep an eye on those temperatures and make sure that we can wrap this at the right point. Remember, the brisket is designed to be cooked low and slow. It's not a fast cook, so it does need to sit there to be able to let that collagen break down and make the meat nice and tender. Okay, now both of the briskets have hit 170 degrees. We're going to take them off now so we can wrap them. Okay, firstly, we're going to do Nick's method of way of doing brisket. We're going to wrap it in tin foil. 
This one's also known as the Texas Crutch or the Texas Cheap. I'm going to take these brisket you've been doing. I'm going to double wrap this one just to make sure it's well and truly insulated. Okay, now here's my method. We're going to use butcher's paper or peach paper as they also known it as. And what we're going to do, we're going to pick up the brisket, put that in there. Let's make this nice and tight. What you're trying to do is we're trying to create bark with butcher's paper. Instead of having so much sort of juices within the paper itself, this way, the juices do come out more but also at the same time you'll still get the same results. Okay, now we've got the briskets off the actual bar, uh, smoker down there. Firstly, let's try and see where we unwrap the one we did in the butcher's paper. Really, really, really juicy. Excessively juicy. Ooh. Wow, Gavin, that has some juice to it. That looks awesome. Oh, it's incredibly juicy. Now, because we've cut that corner off earlier on, we can see exactly where we start cutting. So, I mean, it should be nice and tender. Looks it, for sure. Dude, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> the mm. Yum. Good smoke ring as well. Mm. Awesome, here we go, we're gonna have to try this. Oh, oh, like butter. Mm -hmm. mm. My mum always told me not to talk with my mouth full, but dang, that's good. Mm -hmm. Plus you, she injected as well, it's got the seasoning all the way through. Beefy. Mm -hmm. Even with that rub, with a lot of spice in there, it doesn't overpower it. You really can't actually, you can taste a little bit of the rub. I'm a very traditional, I don't like a lot of rub on mine, which is why I only did salt, pepper, garlic. But actually, even Gavin's one, you can't really taste the rub. It's sort of just melted through. It's got a little bit of heat from the chilli that's in your rub, but yeah, a little bit chilli. It, it's so minimal. Mm. So now it's the moment of reckoning. My salt, pepper, garlic, non-fancy one. All I can smell is a lot of pepper and garlic coming off this. <laughs> I have to say, I can smell the garlic as well, and it smells bloody good to be it's honest. It's looking juicy. Oh, it's definitely juicy. I mean, don't forget this is double wrap, so it's... Cut. Yeah, so there's, there's definite safety measure there. Oh, there's juice in this. Mm. I think this might be good. Oh, I think you could be right. Oh my god, that's a lot of juice. Oh my days. I mean, you could actually leave this just on the side, just for a little bit, and just to create the bark back up again. But <laughs> she shrunk, but boy, and she hot. Ooh, she hot. Oh man, that smells good. Oh, wow, that rather good. Just get that in the bin over there. Just what I'm going to have to empty the bin later on. So the moment of truth. It's time test. to cut it. Do the pull test. You want to do the pull test? You can do the pull test. You've got the gloves on. Oh, <laughs> she's looking apart. good. Good. Can okay, I have mate, to taste? Believe me, it's hot. So watch out for your fingers. Oh, hasn't mm -hmm. got the depth of flavour as yours, but it's got Pretty some. Pretty damn good. good. Mm. Again. It doesn't take much chewing. It's um, very juicy. It's still it's got driven. a really good smoke ring on there as well. But I mean, it's soft. I mean, it, as you can see, it falls apart when you. That's all. You could it. almost shred that. Mm. Almost. It's pulled beef. Yeah, that'd be a different show. different different take. Mm. Mm. I think. Oh, I love the garlic in there. Mm. That garlic comes through so nice. I always love a, a good strong flavour of garlic in mm. against these meats because. They're quite rich meat anyway, so you need something with strong flavours to combat that. You don't want to overpower the beef flavour, no. but it's like that is like roast beef 
on steroids. It's just unbelievable the taste of that. Oh, I'm gonna have to eat some more. Yeah. Excuse us for eating on camera. Yeah. So good. Mm. Again. Really nice. And considering this is just the flat, not the point. I mean, we can still see it's not dried out. I mean, the flat can have a tendency of drying out, especially if when you're cooking a full brisket, when you're trying to cook the actual point to the right temperature, the brisket flat can get just that stage too far and can dry out on you. Whilst Gavin was talking though, I was just looking at the brisket and it was oozing the juices out as you were talking and you're not even squeezing it. So yeah, yeah that's gonna make a good meal tonight. Um, end of the day, I think this is why I would always say that you wrap something because it allows it to cook. You get the smoke ring to start off with, you wrap it. People say that it's a cheat, absolutely. But if it keeps the meat this moist, without any stress, any strife, you can leave it for three hours, just cooking away. It just gives you a soft, tender, juicy, lovely piece of meat. Yeah. You've got that beautiful smoke ring on it um, and it just adds to it. So, we, as you know, we do not prescribe to right or wrong. Yeah. You do whatever makes you happy and what, you, what works for you. For us, wrapping. Realistically, I think, if we're gonna be honest, Gavin, I don't think there's a huge difference between the, the butcher's yeah. paper and the tin foil. Yeah. Exactly Bar the, the paper is throw, you know, it's a bit more recyclable maybe. That's about the only difference. There was no discernible difference between moisture levels of the two pieces of uh, brisket flat. So you've seen individually the briskets. We've got both of them side by side here. I'm gonna let you wrap this up, Gav, because I mean, I've said enough as it is and people don't want to hear me talk all the time, but I'll let you finish this off. I mean, just, I'm blown away with the two different methods here. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. It doesn't seem to matter what way we did it. We either did it with the butcher's paper or we did it with the foil. If we did it with injection, or if we did it without the injection. I mean, the only thing I'd say, maybe there's a the little bit more sort of season throughout the actual meat with the injection mm. one compared to the other one. But other than that, moistness level, pretty much the same. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I mean, it didn't seem to make that much difference with the butcher's paper versus the foil. I mean, again, this is pretty much where we go back and sort of say, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Do you want to use butcher's paper or do you want to use foil? You can do either the result will come out the same. So, I mean, either way, great result. Yeah, fantastic, and we're gonna be eating well tonight. Oh, um, yeah. So, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Give us a like, thumbs up, you know, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be doing a lot more food-based uh, cooks, and, and we're not just doing uh, meats, we're gonna be doing breads, we're doing cakes, we're gonna make sure we can do all sorts of stuff, cooking outdoors, of course, because oh, yeah. there wouldn't be any point in cooking it in the oven. No. Well, you have to sometimes, but you know, why not? We can use the wood ovens, we can use uh, pizza ovens. We've got lots of stuff planned, guys, so keep it tuned, and we'll see you again soon.